Outlaw Radio, conservative talk. I just want to tell you that America is the greatest place on earth. We will make America great again. We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car. And we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. Outlaw Radio, conservative talk, starts now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for this edition of Outlaw Radio, conservative talk, I am joined, of course, by my good buddy, the Hawk Craig Montgomery. How you doing? Good. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. Good to have you on here. And uh, also joined by our other good buddy, Mike Weiss of LMS Tactical. How you doing? Good, good to see you guys. Good to be here. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I just want to cover a few things here um, because we're going to basically talking about uh, the impact of the coronavirus here in the United States, but more importantly, what's going on and what they're doing in South Africa. At least uh, there's some conspiracies going out there, and I'm just praying to God that this is not true. You know, but uh, it's serious enough that I do feel that uh, we need to talk about this. Uh, first off, um, where, where I'm at now, the uh, we are up to 1,396 confirmed cases with 25 deaths. There is only one state in the United States that has not had, claims they have not had a death from the coronavirus and that is the state of Wyoming with 256 confirmed cases. And uh, Craig, I want to start with you. You were telling me something interesting about a medical uh, military hospital set up in the Seattle area where some of the worst cases are aside from New York and New Jersey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, there was a report that there was a 150-bed hospital, temporary bed hospital, set up by the military for two weeks in Seattle. Nobody pitched up. So they packed it up and left. Not one case. There's been reports where reporters are going into New York where the Democrats are, uh, are screaming that it's a war zone, only to find there was nobody there. Nobody even at the front gates. There was no cars, no people. One or two nurses running around inside the hospital. There was just nobody there. The and reports it, are not right. Yeah, the reports out of Utah that some people are dying of heart attacks and they're reporting them as coronavirus deaths. Yes. Yes. Um, now, uh, Mike, you're out in uh, Virginia, and uh, I do believe Virginia's, yeah, Virginia's got... Uh, According to this map I'm looking at, 5,077 5, confirmed cases in the state of Virginia. But overall, uh, what what have you heard uh, in recent news or uh, some of the rumors you've heard as well? You know, I've heard every conceivable theory and rumor that you can imagine, just like I'm sure all of uh, us here on the panel and everybody listening has. Uh, this is going to be the, you know, by the time it's over, it's going to be just catastrophic and there'll be big pits of bodies. And, you know, we've heard all of that all the way up to and including that it's completely false and there's no such thing as the coronavirus. I can tell you that uh, much like uh, uh, Craig said, the there is conflicting reports coming out of virtually every state, mine included, uh, that contradicts what the message the mainstream media is is. Uh, putting out in terms of hospitals and crowding and the direness of everything. I am not willing to roll the dice and, and proclaim that it's a complete fraud, but I am willing to state my reputation on the fact that there is a hell of a lot more going on related to this coronavirus than just the coronavirus, whether it's to uh, use it to uh, install something other, you know, maybe some mass vaccine program. I mean, all of these things that we once thought were were uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, you can't really write about write those off anymore because everybody 
with even the slightest intuition knows that we're not being given the, the straight scoop on what's going on here. And I've had people ask me, well, what do you think, Mike, that uh, everybody is, is uh, uh, all of the world's leaders are conspiring to perpetrate this lie? Look, it would be very easy to misrepresent something and use the media to spin people up out of control and get a frenzy going if you wanted to drive, you know, wag the dog kind of thing. So I don't buy it. Uh, like Craig said, I think the hospitals are not uh, the hospital near me. There's no indication whatsoever that there's anything other than business as usual. Uh, everybody in my house was sick for about three to five weeks, and we are convinced that we had whatever it is that they're attributing it to the coronavirus. We're 100 percent. We had every symptom you can imagine, every one that was listed, and it came and it went. And uh, that that that's not a real clear answer. But uh, you know what? I'm not. A sh I'm more shook up about what we don't know than what they tell us. I I agree with you 100 percent right there too. That. Uh... You know, I, I'll admit, uh, yeah, the media had me pretty scared, too. You know, I mean, of course, I never listen to C CNN or M MSNBC or any of the crap they spew, especially, you know, I, th I think what uh, uh, Chris Cuomo sexual is what was tw trending on Twitter. Cuomo sexual. <laughs> I like it. Um, I, I honestly, I have a I have a feeling he was pretending to po possibly have the coronavirus. I would would that shock you that someone like him, of course his brother, the governor of New York, that whole family's rotten to the core, he'd be pretending to to have this virus and and just help instill that fear in the people. I, I just can't listen to the guy myself. Uh, he is so condescending. Uh, you know, he talks he talks like he's talking to a, a, a school full of 5-year-olds. And his, his, his animated characters and movements and his lecturing, about two seconds, and I'm ready to start smashing windows and kicking kittens. So I, I, I haven't really listened to the guy. He makes me kind of sick. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. Yeah. Hey, so uh, yeah. the rumors I'm getting from people who don't want to be named is people like Tom Hanks stated he had coronavirus, but there's a picture of him being arrested as he got off the plane. His agents all over the sky, taken away. There's, um, and I don't know how true it is, but they rounding up people left and right. Mm. There's this Epstein thing, the black books come out, there's a lot of people getting rounded up. The thing worries me about this Boris Jensen guy from, this uh, Boris Jensen, I think his name is, from Britain. He's extremely sick right now. He better have a lot of people around him to protect him because he managed to get this Brexit through. A lot of people are pissed off about that. Yeah. Uh, kind of like that, uh, what was his name? Um, Hugo Chavez, a dumbass, came here to get his heart fixed. You knew he was never going to leave. Yeah. You know, um, there's, there's something just not, there's something stinks because it, it just doesn't make sense. Look, why did we send 30,000 troops into U Europe right now in the middle of a pandemic? It don't make sense at all. Something, something's amiss. Yeah, so, something, something ain't right in the whole thing, yeah. Suddenly Russia and, and Saudi Arabia make a deal yesterday or the day before for oil. And we backed out of it. We didn't sign no deals with them. And when oil crashed again, went down, didn't go back up. And because, you know, we're, for the first time, we're not getting a dependency so much on foreign oil. And, we, you know, like we did with Bush and Obama in office, and we, you know, you got Trump making other deals. And, God, Nancy Pelosi just will not fucking stop. Well, she's on, she's on happy pills and drinking too much. And the fool thinks she's immune to the law. And uh, according to uh, the bar, he's rounding up a bunch of people because of this uh, Pfizer reports. That little twit, what's his name? Um, Alan Schiff. Oh, God. I was, I was sent a report that I can't very far deny, but I saw the document where a video surfaced while during the administration of the Obama administration 
where some SFB agent sent the video in saying that old Shift was beating up two little young gay boys in a gay party or something, and that was shelved. That's coming to the surface as well. It's part of this whole Epstein crap. Yes. So I, I wouldn't be surprised that a lot of people are running right now. And then uh, shifting gears to South Africa, where, of course, they're getting uh, their numbers up there. I mean, Zimbabwe, from what I understand, has has only a, few, a handful of cases. But, uh, you know, they're pretty scared of how they're going to handle it. Um, but in South Africa, they have put out the full force communist martial law. Of course, uh, black people are pretty much getting away with whatever they want, but uh, it's all, already been confirmed that uh, you know they put in uh, they put Ramaphosa put in a lockdown order, and uh, a white man just simply stepped out onto his balcony, didn't leave his property, just stepped out onto his balcony, and he got shot. And now I'm hearing about this Operation Chariot where, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, this is all a big conspiracy that's, that's going to just fizzle, fizzle out like a bad fart. But, uh, you know, the, from what I understand about uh, this Operation Chariot is uh, if the, the military's given orders to go into somebody's house as a part of their plan for land expropriation without compensation. It's going to be more than land, too. They're going to expropriate people's houses. They're going to expropriate people's cars. They're going to expropriate the food out of their refrigerator and the clothes off of their back and put them out in the street naked and leave them that much more vulnerable. That's part of their agenda right there. You can't tell me anything different there. But uh, it seems like this is all going hand in hand, hand in hand to bring in the full force communist regime that uh, Nelson Mandela wanted from the very beginning. So let me put it to you like this. The black population doesn't believe in the law. They don't care. The law, listen, the policeman standing there tells the guy, hey, you do this. You know what he tells them? I'm coming to your house to kill your kids. The guy looks the other way. That is the law in Salah. The judges... The lawyers over there in the, in, the, in the court system will tell you the judge is scared to make a decision. So he bails them out because they're telling the judge in the courtroom, we're going to kill you. We're going to find you and your family and we're going to kill you. So they don't make decisions. The government has no control. The, the army said, oh, we have orders. We're going to go there and scop and donor. Scop means I'm going to kick you and I'm going to ble- beat the hell out of you. Scop and Donor, that's your, that's your code name for your operation, Scop and Donor. Now, this other uh, operation they're talking about, this was a German operation during the Second World War. It was part of the Night of the Long Knives during the German, uh, during the 1949, that area. So it was, a, it was a German operation. They're using the same code name for the, light, the Night of the Long Knives. Listen, Ramaphosa was the orchestrator of the 1983 document that states boiling the frog. That son of a bitch, I've asked him numerous times publicly. He, on every, almost every video that I can, I put out there, hey, son of a bitch, come and talk to me on, on, on here live. Come debate us live. I want to ask you about boiling the frog. Not one of them will ask him directly. Why? What are they scared of? Why won't they ask him? Why is CNN the only, only international media organization in South Africa? Even Al Jazeera is being shut down because they tell the truth. And the problem is when you get, you confront these guys, they run. You, Julius Malema, I asked him to debate me. He won't. Because I'm going to ask him, how did you get funded to to start the EFF? How did they have that massive conference? All the speakers and all the security and all the chairs and all the buffet and everything. And then you look in the crowd 
and there's a bunch of British people sitting at the table on the left hand side and a bunch of South African businessmen and nobody touched them. They all had their little badges and everything, right? Why? They funded by Britain. Yes. People don't realize Britain never left. They never left since the anglo Boer War. All they did was put puppets in place. You explain to me why every single president in South Africa has to go bow or bend or go have tea with the damn print, the, the, the Queen of England. Yes. One month or two months after he's elected, they off to the Queen. Oh, man. Yes, ma'am. How much shit do you want, man? It's uh, all bullshit. It is. They've been run by the British since the beginning. Cecil John Rhodes colonized South Africa. They stole the diamond mines with the help of the of the Oppenheims and the Rupert. Now Rupert's screaming, oh, don't worry. I'm going to give you a billion rand to help you with this econ economic problem. Why? Yeah. You explain why we do giving you, why is the United States giving them $9.4 billion a year in our goddamn taxpayer money? That, a, that needs to be cut. <laughs> I, I, I'm i flabbergasted. Where the hell is that money? Because if you take $9.4 billion and you times that by 19, 19, where the, every single person in that country will never be in debt. Yes. A year, never be in debt. So where's the money? Where's it going? What's really going on there? And how are we supporting these people when 90% of the time they vote against us in the UN? 99.9%. And according to Lena Marx, we're giving them $9.4 billion. Come on, man. There's something that's wrong. The UN stats from 2012 states that South Africa has the highest murder rate in the world, 60 a day. That's more than this goddamn pandemic in the entire world. Yeah. Um, and, that, that's, and rape. Every yeah. single minute, three girls are raped from the age of two to, to 90. Yes. Nobody says that. Why are we supporting this? We just gave them the USA, whatever group, whatever you call them, the USA, just gave them 8 million rand to help them with the pandemic. Did you see a tent? Did no. Did you see a mask? They didn't did do that. Any test equipment. I knew that was a mistake. I I knew yeah. that. Big mistake right there. Um, oh, yeah. They deployed it. You explain to me why do you need missile launchers in the city? Yeah. They're driving missile launchers down the damn city. Multiple missile launchers. Look at the videos. Look at the thing. They're driving them down in the inside the city. What do you need that for? Was that just for show? Mm -hmm. well, well, let's take a tank too and shoot Mama off a boat. It makes no sense, man. Mm -hmm. Listen, they did an exercise on the Cape Town beach. They fired every goddamn thing at the damn flare and missed. <laughs> then they got stuck in the sand. You give me 10,000 soldiers. And I'll have that country in 24 hours. And I mean real soldiers. Not people that run at the first bullet or fire in the air. I'm talking about real soldiers. Yeah. These guys are a joke. The problem with the white people in South Africa is they law-abiding citizens at the mercy of criminals mm -hmm. who are not law-abiding citizens, not the police, not the, judge, the judicial system, and not the government. So why is the United States feeding our taxpayer money into the system? Just today, I was at Walmart. There's an old folks in the 70s standing there, counting their panties out to just buy two bags of food. And they had to walk away. And I was like, stop. And they were almost, out. I said, hey, come here. I said to the lady, how much was that? I said, like $54. It was a little... Two bags, or I think it was meat and some other stuff that they had. And these guys were old, right? Old Mexican couple. And they would, and they could barely speak, you know. And they were like, the guy got so frustrated. Even his, uh, what do you call it, uh, aid card, whatever, didn't work. He didn't have the money. I called him back. I paid for it. But 
why are we giving these people ungrateful people this money yes they sold all the mineral rights to the chinese the chinese just built a massive city and a massive military base there right no white people and no black people allowed only chinese they have chinese 13 chinese police stations explain that to me they won't allow american ships into that country they're pushing massive amounts of of, of drugs through the harbors now that are coming here to the United States, Canada, Europe. They've got over 42 ISIS, Hamas, and Al-Qaeda camps in South Africa. Some of them are in the military bases like Flak Plus and Youngsfield Camp. They have Arab terrorists training them. What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Why are we assisting these people? Oh, Craig, I um, understand. <laughs> we put sanctions. Yeah. I've got a petition going yeah. right now to stop all foreign aid to South Africa and put full-blown sanctions on. Them. They are supplying diesel Indeed. to Iran because Iran can't produce diesel. So we are supplying them. Well, not we, South Africa. Two companies out of South Africa just got sanctioned by the United States government for trading with Iran. They're not only trading with Iran with diesel, they're trading with them with military equipment. They're selling their military equipment. And that's scary. They're selling them oil and they're storing it in Saldana Bay. Mm -hmm. okay. And buying oil from, uh, what's it, Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So what is happening is they're violating all the U.S. sanction laws. Why are we giving them money? Yes. Well, Craig, I, I honestly hate to cut you off there. I just, I want to oh, give, sorry, man. no, no, I want to give uh, Mike a chance to speak and give his thoughts on this whole uh, Operation Chariot and what's, what, how they're handling the situation over there in South Africa. No, I, uh, actually, I was enjoying listening to Craig. I mean, he's, he's from South Africa, so that's the guy that probably should be speaking on the subject. I don't know, uh, a whole lot about this operation any more than what he had he had said in terms of its world war ii reference but i i can say this i mean you know i hope like you said that billy that it's a uh, a conspiracy but whether it is or whether it's not it really shouldn't change anything in terms of how the south african citizens are living their lives right now listen they were under attack a hell of a lot longer long before anybody ever heard of the coronavirus okay so the South African blacks are a lot more lethal than the coronavirus to South African whites. And Most white definitely. people in South Africa, white people need to have a plan A, as I've been saying all along, plan B, a plan C, and a plan D. And they need to get, as they said in the movie, full metal jacket. You know, a lot of people say there's we don't have weapons, we don't have fire. It's not a gun that kills, it's a hard heart. They need to get that hard heart because you got a lot of the older generations in South Africa. Same thing is happening here. You know, the younger guys that are wearing the man buns here and trying to figure out what the fuck sex they are today want <laughs> old guys like me to drop dead because we remind them of a different era. The same thing's going on in South Africa, but it's a lot more lethal because they don't have time to be dicking around with things like political correctness. They need to start figuring out how you need to position your heart and soul, how to get right with your God and your religion so that you can be efficient when you thumb somebody's eyeball out and feed it to their corpse. Because that's the way, that's what, when this thing, if this kicks off and, and it's a timed, planned, everybody gets hit at once thing, that is no different to me than w if my front door comes off the hinges right now and somebody comes in to do my family harm. I'm, I'm going to react the same whether it was a planned operation or whether it was just some drug addict walking by that thinks he wants to come in my front door. I can tell you this, there's going to be a big mess for my wife to clean up when it's over, but we're still going to be breathing in this house. And they need to get that mindset, whether or not this thing is legitimate or not. I hope it's not. Speaking of the coronavirus, you know, I have a friend of mine that had said, you know, if the coronavirus is as lethal as they're saying it is, maybe this is what the, the, the God's answering the prayers of the South Africans all along. Let's hope that it is lethal and have the white people that are smart enough to stay inside and stay separated and let these assholes running around saying it only affects white people and they're partying in the streets and killing and raping. Hey, let it spread through, man. Hug, kiss, and spit all over each other. And, and let's hope that it is a, an effective exterminator. You know, maybe in the end, the, the coronavirus will do more good than all of these, this, these thousands of requests for help to the outside world 
who with very little exception seems to be turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to South Africa. So that, you know, that may sound extreme to some, but that's, that's the way I roll. You know, I believe that, uh, you know, the coronavirus is real, but, and I, I said this to many people, you know, this virus can kill, especially with the uh, underlying uh, health issues, you know. Um, right. But it's not the bubonic plague of um, medieval Europe. That thing was a killer. Yes, uh, no, that's, that's right. Or the, uh, the Spanish flu or whatever the hell it was. You know, and this we're circling right back to the beginning. But, it, you know, it, the, the, re the reality is this, I believe, and, and I think it's clear that, the, that, you know, it's like you never let a crisis go to waste. You know, it's a virus that was either manufactured and released, manufactured and escaped or whatever, or somebody ate the wrong fucking bat. It doesn't matter. But it's being used, in my opinion, as a smoke screen. To, to gin up something else. And I happen to hope and pray that Craig's right when, it, when we talk about the rounding up of these uh, adrenochrome drinking psychotic pedophiles that have been roaming around. I I don't know, and I'm not ready to stake a claim on whether or not the, the celebrities are actually being arrested. I've heard everything that you're talking about. I hear all this, but I'll tell you what, I pray every night that there is a massive international roundup of these bottom feeding scumbags that includes the Hollywood elitist that includes these Hillary Clinton fat fucking and all our people that have been out here whacking people and everybody committing Clinton side that, that steps out of line, you know, all these people in the Royal family to you name it. I hope that's what it is. And that's the only way I can ex understand and explain why there's military movement that was mentioned earlier in terms of why are we shipping troops to Europe and why are we positioning national guard and stuff throughout the city? Hey, Listen, if it came down to a collective roundup and the president popped on the TV one day and said, hey, ladies and gentlemen, stay calm. This is what's happening. There's a segment of the population of, of the world that is always opposed to the other segment, and they're going to raise hell. In our case, we're lucky because the people that support the bad guys in this in this reality are are kind of the beta, the beta males. So it's not like it's a massive threat. It might be kind of fun, actually. Yes. Yes. And I kind of think, too, uh, Trump put those guys in Europe just in case Russia decided to get too smart, thinking we so busy with that story, they could pull a stunt. The 30,000 troops will stop a few people by the time we get there. So, that's a, that's a plausible you know, idea. may have been a very smart move. Who knows, man? Yeah. You know, um, the Arabs are also causing, they're also talking about, Turkey was talking about attacking uh, somebody the other day. So, yeah, I mean, all these things are in place right now to kind of stop. It, it's a I, I can say this. I, I can tell you this. If, if, it, if it was anybody else in the White House other than Trump, anybody, I'd be shitting solid bricks right now, and I'd be sitting behind sandbags with a saw, and my wife handed me magazines. But I honestly believe that Trump loves his country, and I don't think Trump is going to do a damn thing that's going to hurt his citizens. I, I really trust the guy. Now, maybe I'll end up wearing the clown's hat. I don't think so. I'm a pretty good judge of character. And, uh, yeah, he's crude, and, yeah, he doesn't, he's, he's whatever. That's what I like about the guy, all right? He says it the way it is, and I truly believe his heart's in the right place. If I'm wrong, then shit is a lot deeper and a lot worse than I ever imagined it to be. So I'm going to hold on to the I hope that think he's the clown, I think the clown hat is a, is a ruse. It's just people, people walk into the trap thinking he's a dumbass only to get caught. And how many times has he pulled the deals on all these trade deals and they all thought he was stupid and then he stuck it to them and we walked yeah. away clean every single time. Yeah. It's the art of the deal, if you read his book, it's like this guy plays them down the rabbit hole and then they go, oh, we got him, we got him. And he nails him right yeah, at the end. He's a chess player. Yeah. And, uh, They're the playing checkers. Smart. Yeah. Yeah, the guy's you know, smart. You know, Craig, there was a movie made 20 years ago. You just reminded me of something here. A movie made 20 years ago, it was called Disturbing Behavior, and that movie has nothing to do with any of this, but there's a quote from that movie that I will never forget, and uh, somebody in that movie said, you'll be amazed how interesting people are when they think you are really stupid. It's true. It's good. It's so true. <laughs> yes. I hate to say it, but we are out of time for the segment. Uh, 
uh, before we go to our next music set here, I want to uh, have both of you guys uh, go ahead and plug your YouTubes. And uh, I want to thank you very much for joining me once again and talk about this subject. So whoever well, wants hey, to go first. Right. Yeah, uh, okay, you can find me at YouTube channel LMS Tactical. That's uh, capital L, capital M, capital S, and capital T. Everything else lowercase, LMS Tactical. And you can uh, find my uh, podcast on Podbean, LMS Tactical Radio. And I'm also in, under Instagram and Twitter by the same name. Thank you very much, Billy, for having me on. Absolutely. Go ahead, Craig. Thanks for having me on. Uh, my my YouTube channel is simple. Just just call me Hawk. It was my call sign in Iraq. Uh, it was simple. They said uh, your call sign's Night Owl. I said no. Just call me Hawk, and it stuck. So. That's my channel, and I'm normally on there every once a week, just giving updates of what's going on out there in Africa and the state. So I did one now on the Democrats today, uh, on the Looney Tunes, and the traitors like Mitch Cromney and company. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, once once again, I, I want to thank you guys uh, for joining me, and uh, and uh, by all means, be safe. And I know we'll be talking again. I'll have, be having you guys again uh, sometime because, uh, you know, you're both uh, regular guests for, for this segment. So, all right.